Welcome aboard. This is the fastest 30 minutes in television. My name is Terry David Mulligan, and um, we have for the next couple of minutes, and hopefully the whole 30 if we have them long enough, David Hidalgo and Louis Perez from Los Lobos, who have a beautiful new album out called The Neighborhood. You're starting your tour here in Vancouver and the Commodore Ballroom. Yeah, it's a great place. We played here, what, about three, four years ago? Yes. Yeah. When, we, when it came time to plan this tour, we asked for this venue, yeah. and we wanted to play here. This actually uh, is kicks off our North American tour. Yeah. We, just, we just got back from three weeks in Europe, and we're ready to go, and here's where we start, and it's a great place to, to be. This album is such a joy to listen to. You must have been conscious of the shadow that La Bamba and the two million sales that it had, kind of throwing it over the project. How did you come to deal with the follow-up, really, really, to La Bamba? As, as we start to work on, on uh, what, you know, our, whatever project we're, we're doing, I say this record, it seems as the songs are written, it starts to form and, and become, you know, this living thing, you know. That, in like a science fiction movie. You know? Yeah, you, you can only terrorize yourself so much, you know, by by by, by the past and what's gone on and and uh, all the, the pressures and 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 the, and the stress after something as big as what that was. But uh, um, as David mentioned, once once we got to to writing the the, the songs, um, even though we you know, try to predetermine things and try to figure out a way we're going to do this and no matter how much we talked about it, we just ended up just, the songs, you know, just took their, took shape and, and we, you know, we just gravitated toward our strengths and, and, uh, and that's pretty much how, how it just unfolded. Las Lobos on the nation's music station, Much Music, David Hidalgo and Louis Perez. Um, the, the Neighborhood, the song The Neighborhood is about uh, urban decay and how it affects uh, people around you, but also the title of the album is The Neighborhood and it's, it's about what's happening to our world, am I right here? Yeah, it's more about the world community. It's more about, uh, um, you know, needing to, you know, have, have peace and, and, uh, and uh, it, as silly as it may seem, you know, something just that starts with it, in the home starts from inside each, each and all of us, you know. So uh, not to sound too flowery or anything, but, but that's that, that's really what it's about. But your connection to your music, your audience, and yourselves is through your neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I guess our community where we grew up has a lot to do with, you know, it had a, had a big influence on everything that we do. So, I mean, we try to write. You know, in, a, in a universal way, something that'll you know uh, go across the board. But it's you know, I guess it's still from our viewpoint, you know, from the things that influence us, the stuff that we grew up with. What's it like playing back home? You're, you're heading for Los Angeles. Yeah, what will those dates be like? Will they be different? Well, uh, yeah, they will be different. And only that that it, it's like a big kind of homecoming party sort of thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's no matter where we play as. As, as sort of formatted and 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 nice as it may be, it just kind of like you know, it just turns into like a big party sort of thing, you know. So that's the only real difference. It's kind of like you know, it's it's like a big family sort of thing back home. But <clears throat> same out here, you know. Out here we we we, uh, 
you know, we, we have a pretty solid following that, uh, that uh, it'll, it'll just be a good time. And, and, and then Europe is another thing, too. We play for the, the Italians or the Spanish. I guess they got that Latin kind of blood in there. And it really, Latin connection. Yeah. And, and it really gets crazy. You know, <laughs> they really get, get, get uh, restless and stirred up out there. Uh, tell me about the video, because I want to play it. Where did you shoot it? Tell me about the track itself. Okay. Uh, well, the video was shot in L.A. You know, so uh, I've only seen it a couple of times. Yeah. I'm not too sure you know, yeah. how it actually came out. <laughs> but uh, well, the song "The Riverbed" is uh, uh, I guess we we tried we wrote this song in a so like in a folk form, I guess. You know, in the, she did. In the style of, of, the, of the lyrics and and. Um, and just uh, the riverbed is uh, on our side of town. It's this meeting place. It's uh, the San Gabriel River, and you know it's it's always been there since we were kids. You know, our parents used to take us there and drop us off. When we got older, we'd go down there, and, uh, have bonfires, and get stuck in the mud in the cars and things. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, it's it's just something that we grew up with. So I, I mean, it, this is just like a, use it as a symbol, I guess. But like Dave said, it just we use this as, as a sort of a symbol. In a place that we can make kind of like a, <clears throat> a connection <clears throat> with with nature when we're when we're young, you know, living in kind of like the you know the city kind of thing, you know, it was a place where where you know, it was like going to the beach. Going to the beach was this, going to this one little place where the 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 water from the reservoir was kind of diverted through the through the valley. So uh, just a, a kind of unusual place, but we took it as a, 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 a symbolic sort of thing, and we use the, the, the how <clears throat> nature is kind of like. Kind of uh, um, how we're kind of secondary to to nature, and how really big that everything really is. But do you notice how many of us don't really notice that? You don't. Yeah. It's so darn big, you never see it, notice it. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, you know the mountains and everything, you know. But um, it just, you know, we we took it as a symbol, and we we try to do up this. It's it's a pretty unusual kind of track, but uh, we're real happy with it. Much Western Stereo from Vancouver in the Commodore Ballroom at the sound check for the opening to the North American tour for Los Lobos, David Hidalgo, and Luis Perez. Uh, the album you put out of all Mexican music called La Pistola. Um, beautifully received, beautifully done, D but did it buy time for you so that you could get ready for this album? I don't know if, whether, if you look at a lot. I've been um, asked that question a few times. In a, in a way, we, we, did, we were trying to provide a little like a buffer between yes. that and the next big rock record, but for us, whether that was the the motivation or not, I can't really, I can't. I, it could have been part partly that, but in in doing that record, it, it, we went through such a almost therapeutic sort of self evaluation, really going back into to who we were and what really excited us about music to begin with. You get caught up in success and the road and recording, you kind of it gets a little cloudy. You know, you sit down to write, and the instrument gets a little blunt. You know, and you need you need to take in a, you know, reaffirm re certain things that that uh, essentially were really important to us, and that's what really helped us out. When you got together in, uh, was it 71, 72? 73. Actually. And uh, first of all, you were a SOCOM band, and then you <clears throat> you discovered your Mexican roots, and then you started to write things very socially relevant. At some point along that road, you had to make a decision as to whether you were just going to be a great, you know, sock hop rock and roll band or that you were going to be what you became. How did you come to that decision and when? Well, I don't know. You know, so, um, how did, you know, you know, four guys right out of high school all of a sudden decide to put away the Stratocasters and pick up Haranas and Vihuelas and, and, and play Mexican music that was just like the most uncool thing that any, any kid could do, you know? I don't know what made us do it. I think it was well. Naturally, it was honesty, and as you mentioned, the passion, and and uh, and ultimately the 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 music and how demanding it was to us as musicians that that really uh, attracted us to Mexican music. So in the same way as we you spent you know 10, 11 years of experiencing that, uh, when it came time for us to, to um, well, if we can fast forward just a little bit, if we found ourselves making records and and writing original material after the first record. Uh, it was necessary for us to make a choice whether we're going to be just like known as a great party band or whether we're going to you know do something that's really important 
and uh, it seemed to take care of itself. It seemed to, that it was uh, obvious that there was a great legacy and a great cultural wealth that 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 has you know that is part of, of our of our uh, of our culture of our history, yeah. and um, we it was just. It was the obvious thing to do is to re react to, to, to those things in a more responsible way and to write about things that were important to us. Welcome back to Much West. We're just about run out of time with uh, David Hidalgo and Louis Perez from Los Lobos. But I want to ask you, uh, Levon Helm appears on one track and plays, of course, and sings. He, of course, was with the band. The band had this this view of America. They came from Canada, basically, except for Levon. You come from uh, uh, roots outside of America, and you have that same view uh, that they had. Do you feel that connection? Oh, uh, <clears throat> well, you know, we, we any comparison to the band, it has to be a huge compliment. But, uh, but, but, yeah, you know, we we um, we came came from kind of like a separate reality in in in. Uh, and, and the way we look at things in America are it, it isn't isn't really because we come from this community that's really like a little island off on its own. But you know, we, we grew up listening to 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 um, American music. We think in English. I mean, it just we our, our whole experience was to to homogenize and become part of, of the rest of of, uh, of America. So it's a kind of funny place that that a, that a, a minority or not anymore minority in the United States, but. A, an ethnic group kind of comes to America and finds, finds themselves sort of like assimilating, but at the same time, there's, like I mentioned before, there's no denial where you come from. Yep. David, you, um, I noticed you're playing a, a violin during the, uh, the sound check. Uh, have you added more instruments to the, the number that you already play? Well, because of La Pistola, you know, we got into a lot of instruments that we hadn't played in years, and uh, so we kind of we dusted them off, got them out of the closet. So. We're trying to work it into everything we do now, so, so we've brought a lot of, you know, quite a few things with us. It's, it's amazing. One of my all-time favorite albums is After Weeks, and the, the violin work on that album mm -hmm. still haunts me today. I can't, I don't know why more people don't find a way to use it. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know, powerful instrument. Powerful you know. instrument does counter melodies. Uh, so listen, okay, let's talk about the tour for a second. Let's, let's do some hard marketing before we get there. Okay. Um, you're going, uh, you're going to be in, um, Toronto. Do you yeah. know where you're going to play? Uh, she, she, She's, that's a little ways off. October the 28th in Toronto at the Concert Hall. Right. Okay. And okay. then uh, the 30th in Montreal at the Spectrum. That's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be kind of darting in and out of the country for, <laughs> for, the, for the next few months. But uh, Going through the uh, th through your sound check, you literally ran through a eh, quick mini history of uh, rock and roll. Uh, I just love the way you guys play, and it's so nice to have you back again. Yeah, well, it's great to be here. We need some more videos, though. Can you work on that? Yeah, we're going to do that right away. We'll yeah. try to get some good ones. Yeah, we'll too. try to get some good ones. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> 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 Thanks very much. Yeah.